Hello, this is Geo Techland. Let's take a look at what is new in the world of tech. The creators of Jing OS, which is a Linux based distro that is designed to be touch friendly, has just announced the JingPad A1, which is going to be the world's first consumer level ARM based Linux tablet. This is some pretty shockingly good news here. They are looking to take on Apple when it comes to the tablet world here. And based on what I'm reading from the specs, it looks like it's gonna be very impressive here. It's gonna feature an 11 inch ultra high AMOLED 2K display, which looks very comparable to what you can get on an iPad. It's gonna have a four x three screen and it's gonna come with 5G cellular support out of the box. And it's gonna come with a massive 8,000 milliampere battery, which should give us about 10 hours of battery life. It's gonna have pro cameras with a 16 megapixel main camera and an eight megapixel front camera. You'll also have the option to pair this with a full size keyboard. That way you can turn your tablet into a fully fledged Linux laptop. It's also gonna have a 4096 levels of pressure stylus so we can jot down notes and probably make some cool drawings it's going to come equipped with a wps office suite so you can get some productivity work done and very impressively it's also going to let you run android apps on the tablet here can you imagine playing pubg on this here it's going to have active noise control for recording and meetings. So once again here, it's going to support Linux and Android apps. Android app support on Jingo OS are only for JingPad devices. So that's interesting. But overall, this is some shockingly very good news. And it's almost like a dream come true. I felt that eventually, maybe with something like GNOME, it will start to be more tablet touch friendly. And, and I thought we'd get something like this eventually, maybe like five years from now. The creators of Jing OS have announced an Indiegogo campaign, and they've also released a video where they talk more about the tablet itself. And funnily enough, I was already making a video comparing the Jing OS versus other distros. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. System76 unveils Cosmic as their GNOME based desktop environment for Pop OS Linux. Previously, Pop OS was using a desktop environment very similar to vanilla gnome with their added theme and slight tweaks but now it looks like they're gonna make some added changes uh, to their desktop environment it's still gonna be based on gnome but now they're gonna include a dock i think this is a welcome change pop os realized through feedback from users that a lot of people preferred having a dock panel remain visible rather than be hidden or you know only become visible by pressing like the windows key and i think this makes it a lot more user friendly especially if you're a new user coming to linux they did release a mock-up video of how their new dock will work with their tiling system although it is a very simple change i think it's going to make a big difference i still would have preferred that they included a a layout chooser similar to how Manjaro Gnome and Zorin and many other distros have where you can just easily completely change the layout to make it more similar to Windows or Mac or classic Windows XP or something completely different instead of forcing an environment to the users they should really give you at least the options to opt out like in a welcome screen for Pop OS here this is a good step in the right direction Metro Exodus is out now on Steam for Linux. So a few days ago, Metro was released for Linux. Although this game is a couple years old now, it's still a welcome sign to see other mainstream games make it onto Linux natively. It looks like for now it is only available on Steam. Well, this is all good news. The bad news is that there's been several issues getting the game to work properly. But it looks like the developers are going to be releasing updates to the game. So hopefully issues with the game will be sorted out. Probably going to play this game over in my GeoProton gaming channel. So be sure to follow me on Twitch and on YouTube for some exciting playthroughs. Firefox 88 is now available for download. Enables web render for KDE, XFCE, and Intel and AMD users. They had already shipped web render for gnome users by default in firefox 84 so now they've just been expanding it to other desktop environments here 
Other changes are that it makes pinch zooming easier on a touchpad and makes it a lot smoother. It also joins other web browsers in dropping FTP support, citing potential security risks. So overall, lots of good changes there. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, and follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. Google loses location history court battle in Australia. The Australian federal court has ruled that Google misled Android users over its collection of location data. This is the issue that um, was reported on a few years ago where you would go onto your Android phone, disable location, but Google was secretly still tracking your location. It's still not clear what's going to happen to Google. I guess that's up to the Australian government, but at least this is a positive win against Google and they're very misleading practices when it comes to user privacy here. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile kill their cross-carrier RCS messaging plans. It looks like they feel that they've wasted the last 18 months pretending to do an RCS rollout. So RCS was supposed to be a communication protocol that was supposed to replace SMS. It was going to make it a lot more modern. It'd be easier to send and receive images. It have features such as typing indicators, you know, things like that, that are you can expect on a lot of modern apps. Part of the reason why RCS has stalled is that there's not really much motivation in for the companies as they can't really make money off of establishing this protocol since texting is usually free. So overall, this is bad news for open standards. It looks like Parler will relaunch on Apple's App Store sometime next week. It looks like the iOS app will block some content that's available on the Android and web versions of Parler, a move that is looking to satisfy Apple's developer guidelines. So it looks like Parler met up with Apple and through some substantial conversations, they sort of agreed on Parler making a change that will satisfy Apple's content policy, which is kind of strange because Apple is basically saying you can download the app, we'll just block certain posts, but they won't be blocked on other systems, which is kind of interesting. Parler is still just another for-profit social media site funded by a billionaire. It's good to have a moderation policy for an app store. I'd just rather it wasn't in the hands of tech giants like Apple or Google or Facebook. You have reached the end of this episode. If you like this content, tune in next week for some more awesome tech news.